you have one of these masks or received one of these masks, this is uh, what I call the Montana mask, invented by a doctor in Montana. It's www.makethemasks.com. The idea here is pretty simple. You take a filter media, whether it's an, an N95 that's been cut into four squares, or whether it's HEPA or NPR 1900 or 2200 or 2800, uh, basically, that's the amount of this minimum particulate size that you can kind of get through the material. This will stop viruses, bacteria, etc. So what you do is you cut that into two and a half inch approximate squares based on your window, or you can double it up if you want a little bit more protection. Wedge it in between the frame and filter, and you're good to go, right? But it takes a little bit more than that, right? You can't just snap this in there. And say that you're done because you still have to add gaskets and seals and a strap. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. What I use is a EDPM. So it's a foam rubber. It actually comes as a double piece. And you might want to use a double piece. In fact, if you look at some of the tests that they did, they applied a double piece around the entire side here just to improve that seal. I feel like you can get a pretty good seal with one, and just to conserve materials at this point in time, I think one's going to be pretty good. Now, the first thing you want to do is kind of make it fit your face a little bit better, because there's a generic shape that comes here. So for that, you take your hair dryer, or your wife's hair dryer, put it on high all the way, and for about 15 to 30 seconds, you're going to be moving it back and forth. Don't hold it in one spot, but you know, move it around a little bit. And this plastic, it's PLA, it's going to get a little soft, just enough to kind of form it a little bit. So you might form the nose piece a bit. You might form the, form the bottom chin. This is a one section you'll heat and form. Then you'll heat this section and form it. And then if the cheek pieces are a little too tight or a little too loose, you'll form those a little bit too. Keep in mind, of course, that you still have to get the weather stripping foam in there. So if you have never applied this stuff before, and I apply a lot of it in automotive applications, it's got a removable backing, and you're going to pick where you want your starting and end seam to be. My recommendation is you start at the bottom. So with any type of weather stripping, you don't try and stretch it into place. That, that adhesive will give. What you find yourself doing is actually pushing it into place, and that's going to help it not want to let go. Now this adhesive is really good, and it really adheres well to the plastic. And you're going to constantly keep pushing it while you're trying to match the aesthetic. Now it's important to note that when you get one of these masks, it's not clean, right? Our printers are not very sanitary machines. Uh, the houses or the basements that this stuff is made in, that's also not very hot sanitary. So you're always going to clean it first, right? You're gonna clean it with what you'd clean anything else with. Whether it's cloth wipes, you can dilute bleach, if you're in a hospital setting, you can use Santa Claus or Santa Claus, however you say, you all say it. And you're going to slowly work your way around to try and get back to that original spot. Now there's going to be some left, and that's on purpose, because we have to add a little bit extra for the nose. So we're following it along, we're following it along, and here's where you have to make a bit of an estimation. You want to guess long, not short. So cut it back a bit, because you can always trim it again. And you take a look and see how good you did. I need to trim a little bit more. That should be perfect. And voila. So now you're left with a seal all the way around the mouth. Now, like I said, the next spot you got to add some is more, more of the bridge of the nose. It's going to be right up in here. If you test fit it, then you can see that you can feel there's a little spot where it might your nose might touch for a prolonged period of time. So you're going to want a section and you're going to apply that right on the inside kind of similar to before so there you go now you got a nice double seal and it should feel really, really firm you should still be able to talk throughout the whole process uh, but now what now we have this in place the next step is we have to generate our straps now normally you're going to use elastic for that uh, elastic is a you saw me touch my nose didn't you uh, so elastic is the preferred material but it's also a fairly hard to find resource right now so what I did is I designed and printed these 
clasps. And this is a standard clasp like you would find on any sort of respirator. In fact, the respirator that I have was the uh, kind of the impetus for this design. So what you do is you just slip, slip it in and it holds it, right? And it's an easy, easily detachable piece. And the reason I use rubber bands is because I don't have to cut them, I don't have to tie them. I just loop them around. Let's show you how we do that. So you take your rubber band, you pinch it, and you just simply push it through. You can sing salt and pepper if you'd like, but it's not required. So what I'm doing here is I'm feeding it around and through itself. So then when you pull it, it just creates a nice tight knot that is completely undoable, mind you. We're gonna do that to the other side. So I enlarge the holes on these to accommodate rubber bands or string or elastic. Uh, but trying to push a rubber band is like trying to push a boat with a rope. It's easier said than done. Again, over and around and through, tighten it up. Now the same thing applies here. Now one of the changes I made to the original design, if you can see this or not, is the holes, the mounting holes. I enlarged them quite a bit. I think it was uh, seven millimeters on the outside and five millimeters on the inside using the push and pull in Fusion 360. So you're gonna decide which side you want, the short piece and the long piece. And just like before, you're gonna push it through. Now granted, if you have elastic on hand, then by all means use it. And pull it through, there I go. Push it through, create a bit of a loop, right? And just push that through the loop. There you go. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'll keep the clips consistent. And with this, we're nearly done. Uh, remember, you have to sanitize this thing. Now, the recommendation is that you sanitize it every day. Uh, you're not going to be working in healthcare. I mean, some ho some hospitals are allowing this. Some hospitals are not because it's not you know FDA or NIOSH approved. Instead, they're just asking that everybody wears the same mask over and over again, which also is uh, not recommended, but you know, we're using fabrics, we're using cloths. If you're gonna use a cloth mask, just keep in mind that each type of cloth has a different percentage of particulates that it can block. And in no case, any of those cloths are greater than, you know, 70, 80%. So uh, those need to be washed and cleaned after every single use too. They're, they're not prolonged. All right, so we got our clips on. The last thing to do is our filter media. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out so it's, just a little bit bigger than the frame, not by much. Take a nice pair of sharp scissors, because this filter media is not that easy to cut. And then you put it on the filter frame, kind of center it in there, get it nice and centered, and press it in. So now we have it. Now when you're gonna put this on, it's gonna be the same anytime you put on a respirator. I like starting with the top. Oh my goodness, of course that happened. So you might lose an eye in this, but you know, it's all for science. And there you have it. So now you have a filter that you can wear. Now, the success of whether or not you're gonna fog your glasses is gonna be based on two things. The first is gonna be how well you fit your nose piece. In my case, you can see my glasses aren't fogging up. These are 3D printed glasses because, of course, with COVID-19, optometrists don't want to see you just because your glasses break. So this is something that if you size it right, you can wear all day long. Now, is it going to be incredibly comfortable? No, not necessarily. This one isn't that bad. Uh, and these are all going to be varying in size. So if you find that you're wearing it and you're like, man, I really wish the bridge of this nose was a little bit wider. Hit it from the outside with the... This is ridiculous, I'm still holding this one, pardon me. Hit it from the outside with the hairdryer and then you can kind of reform it. After a while, you're gonna have to replace the weather stripping. That's just inevitable. Uh, this stuff, it cannot be sanitized as well as other materials, as well as the PLA. The PLA, you should be able to sanitize using bleach mixes or again, you know, cloths or something like that. Uh, several times for quite a while. You can use it for quite a while. And when all this is over, you'll have a nice little respirator that you can use in the wood shop when you're just, you know, doing uh, high pollen things like pulling weeds or working on wood. So 
that's the concept. That's the idea. Obviously, if you have any questions, just let me know. Now, if you want to know if you did a good job creating a seal, what you're going to do is a bit of a vacuum test, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand over the filter area and I'm going to try and breathe in. And if I have a good seal, I should feel the mask suck to my face, right? So I'm unable <laughs> to actually breathe in when I just simply cover the front of this. I'm not pressing it, mind you. I'm just kind of covering it with my hand. That's testing that I'd actually have a really good seal around my entire face. <laughs> so don't do that too many times, but uh, it kind of gives you an example of how you can test to make sure that you fitted this thing correctly. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah, be careful. Thank you.